Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Good Owl Games, the place where I love to give you two player insights into some great games for game night. So, roll and write games have increased in popularity over the last couple of years and these are games that involve you rolling dice and writing things down or crossing them off on pieces of paper. And they seem to come in a huge variety of themes and interests. Um, but today I'd like to tell you five things I think you need to know about Roll Into Town, which is a game in which you get to play as your own mare. <laughs> Towns come in all shapes and sizes, but yours is going to be built on dice. On your turn, you'll discover new areas around your town, using them to give you resources. These you can spend to upgrade your buildings and enhance your natural resources. You've got 12 turns to create the most prosperous town. Thing one, what's this game all about? So Roll Into Town has you as the mayor of a budding town, um, which you're trying to grow and expand by gathering resources and building buildings. Um, theme wise, well, you're not going to find much here, but I think that's kind of the case with most roll and write games, really. There is this medieval setting and you can kind of see that in the types of spaces you can fill in where there are things like miners and woodcutters and a cathedral. But overall, if you're looking for some sort of story here, it's going to be the kind that you bring yourself to the table and tell yourself about the kind of town you're building. Now, similar games to this, um, I guess some of kind of the, the goal orientatedness of cartographers is present here, where you're trying to place particular spots near other spots to get victory points. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? So since this is a roll and write game, you're starting with a blank piece of paper and a pencil. Um, there are a number of dice and at the start of the game you're going to roll five of them and you're going to choose three and each side of the dice um, has a different kind of terrain feature of that that you're going to be able to kind of draw onto your board. So there are things like rivers, there are oceans, there are um, forests, mountains and fields and each of these will also be able to give you resources in the resource phase if you have them out on your board. So this is kind of the start of your engine. Um, so once you place them out, then the next step comes while well, you can buy stuff from the market. Um, so you are able to buy buildings to put onto your board um, that will do all sorts of things. Um, the most important one seems to be those that will um, enhance basically any of the resources you're already making. Um, there are also those that do bigger things like allowing you to exchange dice for one or another um and things like that and then there are some that are just worth victory points that you're going to want to invest in at some point um and so once you've kind of done your shopping then there is a resource gathering phase where you get everything that you have put out on the board and you prepare yourself for the next turn and you play for 12 rounds and the number of dice um, you get diminishes as the game goes on and that's to choose from the number of dice but also the number of dice you get to pick as well diminishes so the game kind of escalates towards the end um, overall, this is a kind of game where you really have to be very thoughtful and considered um, and kind of take your time figuring out where everything is going to go and how it's going to benefit your next move. Thing three on the table. So yeah, it's pretty hard for a game like this to have table presence, but it is tidy and colourful. The good news is, is it's tiny. You could play it on your lap and it doesn't really take any time to set up or to put away. So it's got that going for it. Um, it takes about 30 minutes for two of us to play and that time kept decreasing the more we played the game so I assume it's one of these that once you get to know everything you could be through it lightning fast. Um, the rule book was okay um, but I do have an issue with the fact that there was very important information hidden in the rule book that kind of everybody I think should have had access to and this is the cost of the different buildings that you can buy. I really wish this had been on a separate card for me to reference as a player or had been printed on the sheet of paper um, either because both myself and my other players all needed to look into the rule book to know the cost of things and there are a number of things in there with costs and they're important to know um, so that's my problem with the rule book that, that those particular set of rules were still in the rule book 
Um, otherwise, replayability, I do feel like this is a game that you are going to want to perfect your score rather than explore new strategies. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? So firstly, I'm dealing with a prototype copy, so you'll just have to take what I say with a, a grain of salt. Um, but I liked the art on the box on, from the outset of this. It looked kind of quaint and pastoral, kind of English countryside. It was kind of setting the vibes for something very relaxing and easygoing. Um, there is no other art in the game apart from the symbols that you use to fill out your board and that are on the dice. And I'm a little bit torn about these because I can see the point here of going for the hand-drawn, kind of crafty looking idea. But at times it also feel like it looks a little unfinished or a little unpolished. Um, and you yourself, I suppose, will have to decide how you feel about you know, either end of that spectrum. Um, component quality wise though there's not much to judge here but the paper is nice and the dice are rather lovely like overall this is a, a simple production um, and it works well for the game thing five is this game actually any good firstly it's really lovely to see game design from irish designers this for me is really exciting and when it comes to roll into town it's this unusual mix i suppose of gathering resources but also where you've placed said resources so that you can gain victory points and on the outset it sounds kind of simple um but let me assure you everything comes with strings attached so if you put out mountains and you decide you want to get ore well you're going to need a miner to do that if you decide you need wood from your trees and you're always going to need wood for something let me assure you you need a woodcutter and the woodcutter actually cuts down your trees. He erases them from the board so that you have to go and make more trees. Um, and that's everything you need to know about this game. It's, it's quaint but cutthroat. Um, there are a number of places here where you could make a mistake that would drastically change the game for you. Um, it's very unforgiving. And part of that is to do with having to be exacting with how much how many resources you need to buy a particular thing at a specific time. Um, but also you can make mistakes right from the outset that drastically changes your game. I'm very against the idea of needing a particular item to be able to buy the same item. And on your opening turn, you could accidentally spend your wood and have a very difficult time um, getting a wood cutter later in the game. And wood is a very important resource. Um, so as you can see, it's very exacting here. Um, but yeah, you know, you you have to have a plan really to wrangle with this. Um, the good news is, I suppose, is that um, you are only playing with yourself. It's just you versus the board. So when you make a mistake, it's your own problem. There's really no player interaction here. Um, but there are a lot of unusual ideas and fun things that I really liked. Um, I liked that there were a lot of buildings you could buy that would enhance what you already had. I was a big fan of that. There were buildings that allowed you to alter your dice or to be able to exchange resources for other resources, which I, I thought was a nice touch as well. And as much and all as I hate the uh, rubbing out of trees when you use your woodcutter, I also found this to be quite inventive as well. I've not seen anything quite like it. Um, I suppose the big thing here for me is that this feels like a game where there are specific ways to win and optimum strategies. My, my husband would attest that he has found the optimum strategy and would never play it any other way. But I don't feel like that takes away from the fact that you could just sit down and build your city and or your town and fill, fill it out and enjoy it regardless. Um, but it does feel like you are trying to beat a particular number, beat a particular score rather than exploring the game or things you could do. Um, overall, this is kind of a fun little game. I think if you like roll and rights, maybe you'll like this um, a little bit more than I did. Um, but I do think there's something kind of special going on here, even if it wasn't entirely for me. Um, but I blame that on roll and rights anyway. So do I think you should have roll into town in your collection? I think if you're a fan of roll and write games, you might find something a little bit extra here to enjoy. You've been watching Good Owl Games. Why not like or subscribe to the channel to get updates about my future videos? Or if you have any comments or queries you'd like to make about Roll Into Town, why not shout them off in the comment box below? And until next time, tune in again for some more short and hopefully informative board game reviews.